Bella's brought the collar, but left behind the color. Here's a look at the NECA Toys Universal Monsters, the black and white Bella Lugosi Ultimate Count Dracula. NECA announces a new ultimate action figure of the most famous vampire of them all, Dracula. NECA has created a special black and white figure that features the formal tuxedo seen in Dracula's Carfax estate. Designers work closely with the estate of Bella Lugosi to capture the actor's expressive likeness and for additional background detail on important costume elements. Standing in 7-inch scale, the ultimate Dracula Carfax Abbey action figure has removable soft goods cape and comes with plenty of accessories. Top hat, cane, bat, flight stand, plus three interchangeable heads and hands. Includes an additional neck piece making it compatible with the heads from the colored versions. Just before we look at Dracula and all the accessories we'll find at the Abbey, let's grab the tape measure first and see how tall the figure stands. Well, it may look like it's just a simple black and white version of the colorized Bella Lugosi we looked at from, from before. It in fact is slightly tooled in the tuxedo. We'll talk more about that in a moment. Though the black and white Bella Lugosi stands about 7 inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 18 centimeters tall. Moving over the monster, though, to make some available space, let's bring in the colorized version of Bella Lugosi's Dracula. And while you can see the heads are going to be the same, you can also see as well that for the most part, the bodies like the arms and legs are the same. It is really, though, the abdomen or more the torso area that's very drastically done differently. The pendant or the necklace they would have originally had in the first colorized version has gone altogether in favor of just a straight bow tie and appears to be a pocket watch as well. Bringing in some of his other colleagues of a black and white state. Here's what the figure as well looks like with the Bride of Frankenstein we just recently had a look at. And if you can just excuse myself, just I'm going to get in there in between the two of you. Let's bring in also as well the black and white Frankenstein's monster. A great way of displaying the figures. Most of the accessories that came included with that colorized version get also carried over to the one that doesn't have the color. Like, for example, he does come include with the bat. He still comes include the th same three swapped out heads, interchangeable hands, and the cape. Although the colors are completely gone this time around. If you do grew a little attached, let me just kind of carefully bring these in. For example, the bottle, the goblets, the saucer, and just reaching off to the side as well, the candelabra. All of these that would have been included with the colorized version of Bella Lugosi's Dracula are unfortunately omitted this time around. But like I said, you do get the other things as well. I'm going to just carefully put that to the side and not knock over the goblets. The figure comes included with still the same bat. The bat, for example, does come included with the acrylic stand standee. And then, of course, the little circular base to the bottom of it. This attaches just to the bottom of the bat. You see there's a hole very obviously on the bottom of the bat's belly. Well, that's, a, that's a lot of bees. So bringing in, that's not apparently what a bat sounds like, bringing in the original bat so you can see they're very similar in fact. The one thing I really do like about the black and white release though is that it does add some additional, if I can get my hand, there we go. You can see they've added some additional like highlights around the eyes. In a way, it kind of makes it look a little bit more like a raccoon. If you were to say, look at the original one, for example, let's get the camera to focus in. Can the camera, there we go. The camera at least shows better on the colorized version that all the little highlights of shadowing around the eyes wasn't on the original release. So there are a few little tweaks. The molding seems to be the same shared between the two bats, but again, just slightly painted differently. For all intents and purposes, I mean, you could use either, either one of these bats for displays or hey, why not? You could actually have both bats displayed with say one of your Draculas. And again, it just simply attaches onto the top of the display stand plugs in place like that and then you can have the bat displayed uh, you would look at the base for example and think that the bat base is not big enough for example to accommodate the bat but again like the the base and the size of the bat there's no teetering issues necessarily the bat stays fine the figure comes included as well uh, with his top hat now these these are some of the things that are specific say to this figure is the fact he comes included with the top hat the top hat is not the softest of plastics i actually was expecting it to be a little bit softer than what it is you could use it say with this bella lugosi or if you wanted to you could bring back in the colorized version you can also put that on his hat as well or on his head as well the only thing i would worry whether it be the colorized or the black and white is the flaking of paint that may occur the number of times you're putting the top hat in place. Like the top hat, for example, I'm going to grab the black and white here. If you were to put the top hat on his head, for example, it sits fine. I mean, really, you could tilt it upside down. 
It's not going to go anywhere. It's going to survive the blizzard test. The problem with it, though, goes along is that I feel like it's going to start to damage the paint that they applied to, like, the face, specifically around the forehead area. Just because, again, like, that's a lot of friction, and the hat is so close to the, the forehead, for example, I'm sure that's going to cause damage to the paint. So I'm probably not going to do that too often. Or if I decide I want to have it displayed, I'm probably just going to pick one head to do that, say, for example, this one, and always have the figure displayed with the top hat, just because, again, I don't want to, you know. I also feel like there's probably going to be leaving behind, eventually, a little bit of paint from the inside, unless they just molded this in the black plastic. But still, you got to believe at some point it's probably going to be leaving marks behind on the forehead. Definitely don't want that to happen. The figure as well comes included with his cane. Now, straight out of the box, he has already a designated hand for holding the cane. Let me just look at, show you guys the cane, what it looks like first. Cane is mostly molded here in black plastic with a little bit of silver on the end of it. Looks very nice. It can be displayed in his existing hand. He has sort of a hand that, if you look at it, kind of looks like he's more pointing. But if you have the hand down, it actually can rest just between his thumb and his pointer. See that? And holds fine. I mean, I don't want to be shaking the figure around that much, but it seems to be holding the cane okay. There is also, as well, another hand that's also like this hand here. If you want to have, for example, the cane a little bit higher up, then the figure can also hold the cane that way as well. And again, just pop the hand. Just pop the hand off and swap it around. Speaking of swapping around the hands, the figure as well comes in close some mauling hands. One of the hands specifically does have the ring, the other hand does not. But you can see they're nicely painted with an additional wash of black over top of it, really bringing out some of those details. He also as well comes in clue with some relaxed hands, so again, if you wanted to swap those out. What, one thing you'll notice as well with the hands is that getting this guy to the packaging, he already has the gloved hands on. So the hands that we are looking at right now are clearly not the hands that have the gloves. These are just what his normal, I would say normal, his Dracula vampire hands would look like underneath the gloves. I personally like the gloves myself. And again, if you wanted to, you could... I'm going to really stop doing that. You could pop those off. You could, in fact, replace them with the Bella Lugosi if you wanted to use the gloved hands because, again, they're using the same pegs. That's easy. No problems there. Here's where I have one problem with the figure, and it's more my fault than anything else. I'm going to just move the bat out of the way. What problems? What problems? What problems? The cape. The cape is a nice material. That's not where my problem is. It's a good weighted material, too, and it does have a little bit of stretchy nature to it. It's a very similar, in fact, cape to the one that we did get from before. The only thing about the original cape is it was all black, whereas this one actually does have the silver on the inside of it. I, similar to, again, like the scene in the Carfax Abbey. But I love the uh, the idea that they gave the additional silver on the inside of the cape, where, again, like the original cape didn't have that. Here's where my problem came, and it's all solely the responsibility of this guy, admitting it right now. It clips on the back of the figure's body the same way as the colorized version did, and it drapes very nicely also as well. Here's where my problem came. I must have had a little bit of the fabric stuck somewhere, or maybe I had changed the head out. I don't know really what happened, but when I decided to take the cape off... One part of the cape stayed behind. I don't know if it got tucked somewhere here on the side of his neck. Then when I pulled it off, ultimately, though, I ripped the side of the cape. I definitely didn't want that to happen. I'm going to see if I can find a way to seam that, stow, sew that, or even possibly even glue it in place. That's my fault. I take full responsibility for that. But unfortunately, though, just while taking it off, I don't know what happened specifically, but it just uh, it, it ripped. It ripped when I took it away from his head. So I think probably some of the fabric got stuck inside maybe his head. And when I was taking it away, I didn't realize that some would stay behind, and I ripped the cape in the process. Anyways, the cape, I still would clip on, and it clips fine, even though it does have a little rip on the side. And again, you, I mean, the way I have it right now, you wouldn't even, I guess you could kind of see it right there, but I mean, you can't really even tell the fact that it, it does look ripped, and it does look really nice on the figure. Uh, it clips in a way that if you were to look at it, for example, there's a little lip of plastic. Can you see that right there? I'm trying to put my finger underneath it so you can see. Maybe that's one of the problems is the fact that it tucks into the collar like that. And the whole idea is it's supposed to be that like that so it stays in place. Maybe that was the thing that when I was removing it, some of the fabric got stuck in there, <laughs> ripped in the process. Really, really bummed out by that. So I'm going to see if I can fix the cape. At least it hasn't ripped all the way. It's only ripped just a little bit. So I'm going to put that to the side. And then the figure, of course, comes and includes some swappable heads as well. All of the heads, by the way, have very long necks, very very obviously long necks. These do all, all easily attach by simply just popping off the existing head. Okay, we'll do it, we'll do it. We'll pop off the head. And you really have to kind of feed the neck all the way in there. There's quite a lot of cavity before the head actually hits a ball joint. And then, of course, you got the smiling face. And then you also have an angrier expression of Dracula as well. All of these head sculpts, by the way, 
just happened to be as well the same head sculpts that we did get with the colorized version. So there's nothing really done differently here. Just same sculpting, still very nice sculpt on all the figures' faces. Just the fact that you, you have this time around a black and white portrait instead. Now, I think for me, at least, I'm probably going to have the figure displayed, I think, with a smiling face. I, actually, you know, to be honest, with all of these figures, neither of them, neither of mine probably will have the figure displayed with, like, this head sculpt. I like it, but I think I prefer the smiling face, or if anything, the more neutral expression. Either one of these would be fine. I think in case you were also curious, too, I did say earlier that if you did want to swap and change, say, for example, take these gloves off and put them on the colorized version, you could also do that, say, for example, because, again, like this one does have the medallion, this one does not. But what you can also do as well is if, for example, let's pop the head off this guy, we're going to grab one of the colorized version heads. And because they work the exact same way and the ball joints worked, it works the same way, and, of course, the socket's exactly the same as well, you can take the colorized version of the head and pop it in place. Now, the, dis the description online for this figure actually says that there's an additional neck piece that accommodates the colorized heads. I don't really think it... It doesn't obviously come included with one, and I don't think it ever really needed one either. I mean, because, again, like it works the exact same way. It just plugs in place. Making sure, of course, you get it all the way in there. Yeah, now you can get yourself a colorized version of, of course, him from the Abbey, and then you can also have the colorized version of just in the regular uh, Dracula outfit and have both figures displayed that way. The only thing that really would be the telltale is the fact if you just change out the hands. But yeah, if you did want to use the gloved hands, hey, why not? You can go that route as well. Now, again, we're just for this, going to pop back in the neutral expression face. There we go, pop that in place. And bring back in the colorized version of Dracula so you can see once again, the tailed jacket seems to be identical as well as the handkerchief placement is exactly the same. If you were to say, look at it from just that alone, you would look at it basically in the exact same figure. Now, of course, this one does have the medallion. This one has the little pocket watch on the side. Uh, they're, they're molding them obviously differently. The jacket is, a, is one piece obviously to the vest, so they wouldn't have re-sculpted, say, the vest. So they would have basically had to re-sculpt this whole piece just to, again, include those additional features that the original one didn't have. The back of the jacket looks to be identical. The placement of the buttons also seems to be the same. And the pants and the shoes are also identical as well. So there is at least some considerable changes enough that you're not simply just looking at the figure and saying, okay, it's a black and white version of the one that we did get from before. No, this is actually one of those exceptions to that where we actually get ourselves a completely differently costumed character. And I like the fact that NECA decided to do that instead of simply just giving us a colorized, a black and white version of this. I don't know if that means now that we're not going to be getting a color, a black and white version of this version of Bela Lugosi, but even if we don't, I'm fine for the idea that we actually get this one from the Abbey instead. Now, for the articulation, it's going to be exactly the same. The head's going to be on a ball joint, so it rotates all the way around. And technically, as well, the figure does have two ball joints. He's got one right here, if I get my thumb out of the way, my finger out of the way. And he's got one right here at the base of where that sunk inside the cavity, so he's got additional ball joint there as well. Arms come out at almost 90 degrees. They're a little more on the tighter side, so I can get up almost 90, just a little less than that. Arms rotate also all the way around. That's the same on both the sides. The figure does have a single hinge in the elbow that allows the form at least to rotate back and forth, and you can rotate the hands all the way around. Upper torso is going to be on a ball joint, still the same. I mean, again, like this is all one piece that's basically over top of the ball joint. So again, everything that moves, moves together. Legs do split out there on ball joints. You can take the legs and move them forward. You can move them back. And with that, there's also a little bit of a swivel at the top of the thigh. The figure has a single hinge in the knee that allows as well the lower leg to rotate. There's ankle articulation back and forth, and you can also rock the feet back and forth this way as well. I love the figure. I really like the fact that this isn't simply just a color, just a black and white version of the colorized version that we did get from before. There's at least some considerable changes that have been made for the torso. So again, if you like the Carfax Abbey version of Dracula, you get that. And again, if you wanted to, if you have more than one Draculas to work with, hey, why not? You can also, again, take one of the colorized versions of the head sculpts and simply just replace it with this one if you wanted to keep the gloves as, their, as his hands instead of just his regular hands. The moment, though, obviously you start to change out these hands will break up some of the color scheme and it's not going to look quite right. So I'm going to stick with, I think, the gloved hands this time around. The only thing I'm honestly still bummed about is not the way the figure turned out, but the way that, unfortunately, the cape ripped. It never was the case when I looked at this figure, and it still isn't the case with that figure. It must have just been a whole bunch of things all aligning all against me that when I plugged this in place, that little clip on the back must have had that sitting in the collar. And when I moved it, maybe some of the fabric was still stuck behind and it rips. Ah, oh, look at the rip right there. At least it, at least it didn't rip all the way. And it was able to, at least the color came off before any more damage was done. I'm definitely going to have to go in and see if I can fix that. I don't know if I can glue it. 
I really don't like to have to add glue to any of my figures. I like to think that none of the figures ever get broken. Nothing luckily got broken on Bella, except for really just his cape. And other than just fixing that, a nice fine release from the folks over at NECA Toys. Now, generally, is the case with these Universal Monster releases from NECA Toys that when we do get the colorized version, it's safe to assume that months from then, we're going to be getting a black and white release of it using the same body and, in fact, using many of the same accessories. And I'm okay with the fact that they decide to use all the same things that came packed with one, just carry it over with a whole lot less color. That has certainly been the case so far when it comes to Bride of Frankenstein, Frankenstein's Monster, the Wolfman. I haven't included in that list the mummy because I don't have, at, at this point, at least the black and white version of the mummy. I will be picking that one up soon, so I I can have that one displayed with the rest of Universal Monsters. One thing I do really like, though, is that they saw an opportunity to do things differently here with Dracula. While using, yes, the same head sculpts times three and using still the same arms and still the same legs, they saw the opportunity to at least retool a brand new torso part of the body. So instead of giving him just the medallion torso from before, we get instead a differently suited t a Dracula with a tuxedo from the Carfax Abbey. I love the idea that they actually saw an opportunity to use the mold and tweak the mold. So if you did want to have this figure display with the black and white Universal Monsters, which that's the direction I'm going to go with at least, you could also go the route of also changing out the head sculpts. Providing you keep the gloves in place and you don't ruin the illusion of the black and white regular skin hands for the vampire Dracula. If you use the gloves though, you could easily use the, the one of the colorized heads, the three that we got with the other, other release. Simply just swap it out with the one that we get with this release and you can have in fact two versions of Bella Lugosi on the shelf. The regular suit version of Dracula we always normally recognize when it comes to Dracula from the original 30s film, but you can also get the one as a, well as the Carfax Abbey release of Dracula and have two colorized versions of, of Bella Lugosi that way. But what do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. And if you have picked up this figure, let me know down below in the comments section how you have them displayed. Do you have them paired along with the rest of the black and white releases? Or have you swapped the head out for the colorized version and have two Bella Lugosis in color? Also as well, uh, if you guys certainly enjoyed this video, I want to hit with a like. I'm still honestly bummed by the idea that I had to rip the cape, but at least from, from what I can see, it's, well, you can kind of see like, part of the collar is lifting away from the rest of the fabric definitely gonna have to fix that i'm bummed by that but i'm happy with the figure if you guys certainly though wanted to stick around on this channel because there's definitely gonna be a lot more NECA reviews coming your way but yes hit that like if you enjoyed the video hit the subscribe if you want to stick around for more and turn on the bell notification so you're going to get those reminders every single time a new video gets posted also if you have a little bit of time on your hands popping up at the very end of this video will be not only one playlist for NECA toys but a secondary playlist for all the universal figures that i've looked at across the board here on this channel it's definitely if you have a little bit of time check out those playlists and of course, as always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.